question is from Gretch. <laughs> what, are, what are some strategies to avoid burnout as a trainer and tips for making time to train yourself? You guys remember the first time you burned out as a trainer? Oh, yeah. <laughs> When I first became a, a, a we trainer, did like twelve appointments in a row. Yeah, I was yeah. so. It was early for me, man. I, I I I fell in love with the job, and I quickly fell more in love with coaching trainers over actually training clients. Training uh, clients is fucking draining, dude. It's hard. It's, it's I, drudgery. When if I you make it. when I first became a trainer, I was so excited to be a trainer, to be working in a gym that I just took all clients, yeah. any clients, any time. As many as possible. Which I think there's a lot of value in that. There is at first. Yeah, and I remember it, it was like, I remember my schedule was something like I'd get in at 8 a.m. and I'd work till 1. Then I'd have like a break for like an hour or two. Then I'd get back to work and I'd work till like 9 p.m. Then I'd go home. Then I'd come back at 3 a.m. because I had like these clients that nobody wanted to train. You know, I worked at a 24-hour fitness gym. So someone wants to buy training, but they only can work out at 3 a.m. I'll do it, you know. So I'd come back and I'd go back home and go sleep. And I did that, and I was young, and I was 18, I had lots of energy, but I remember it starting to like burn me out where your eyes burn and your body tingles because you're tired and you're just like, <laughs> my workouts are starting to suck. Yeah. So I think, number one, uh, for most trainers, the, t the most amount of clients you probably, on a long-term basis, I'm not talking about for short bursts, but on a long-term basis, on a day-to-day -day basis, you probably want to be around six to seven clients most, long-term. Now, that doesn't mean you can't train more than, you know, like eight, nine, or 10 here and there, but uh, I haven't known very many trainers that can train, you know, 40 sessions consistently week in and week out long term without experiencing uh, well, some type of burnout. I, I think a better yeah. tip is that because I do think that there, I think everybody, when you first start, you should take everything you can. I think that's a, a sign of a, a, a good trainer. And I think you learn a lot uh, training at all hours and all types of people. But once you get to a place where you're you're making a comfortable enough income that you're you're not you know living paycheck to paycheck or stressed out how you're going to eat the next week, then I think it's really smart to start only taking the type of client that you like to train and being okay with okay I'm I'm going to turn down this client and I could make more money I have the availability to do it but quite frankly I know I don't enjoy doing that mm -hmm. and for me that was like I told I wasn't a big fan of advanced age and kids. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't my expertise. I thought the training sessions were boring for me, um, and it wasn't that I couldn't or I wouldn't. It was that uh, they. I wasn't as uh, excited to train those types of clients, so I stopped taking them. You know, I I would look for my ideal client or the clients that I really enjoyed helping. And that makes a big difference on how that day feels like when you're training the type of client that you want versus taking clients just because you need the money and you're filling your your schedule up. I can do eight, nine hours uh, in a day of training clients if they're all clients I really enjoy. Uh, I could have only five or seven. If half of them I don't like, it will feel oh, like, yeah. it'll, it'll feel like twice as long of a day. So I think that matters more than anything else. Yeah, it makes a big difference. And here, the, the other thing is this, is uh, as a trainer, you, you end up having to learn this because uh, if you don't, it's, it'll kill you. Don't take it personally when your clients don't do what you say. Mm -hmm. When you first become a trainer, you take it all personal. Like I told her, you know, okay, oh, she's going to do exactly what I said. And then she comes back and train for months. Like, Why aren't you doing the meal plan? Why aren't you following what I said? Why aren't you exercising on your own? And then you start to take a personal. And if you do that, you start to hate what you, what, what you do. What you end up having to realize at some point is this is a hard, long journey. Take nothing personal and just be happy that they're there making the, the commitment to at least show up and work out with you and do the workout, because otherwise you start to take things those, those things personal. You start to have these battles with your clients. You'll either lose clients, or you'll get to the point where you start to hate people because they're just not doing. And you start to feel like you have you provide no value. I learned this the hard way by blowing people out the door for not following all my advice, and then realizing that I've done them no good yeah. at all. Now, do you did you guys ever have mm -hmm. a hard time with making time for yourself? And did you have things that you did to like working out sometimes? Yeah. Yeah. That's part of the question, right? So it's yeah, not just carve that out. burn oh, out sure. for being a trainer. I scheduled also, it. It was yeah. in my, it was in my schedule book. So I would, oh, if, if I had a gap that was an hour and a half or two hours, mm -hmm. uh, which I always made sure to have, I would write down workout. And so yeah. I for sure made a time. I think there also is, I mean, there's, a, there's problems I see with, with your average trainer that's kind of, and I know like you're just starting out. I totally agree with you guys. I think you should take on as many as possible. You're going to learn so much that way more than you would anywhere else. 
Uh, and then also you'll find like which ones, you know, you, you gel with the best and what direction to go with that. And then there's also charging more. And I, I feel like the, there's, there's a problem where trainers really undervalue a lot of what, you know, they provide uh, their clients. And I think that they feel guilt. I think they feel a lot of guilt because a lot of the times what draws them into the fitness industry is their passion and their drive to help everybody. Yeah. You know, we want to just help everybody. And I was, I had a little bit of that when I first started. I just want to help people, you know, and I would take people at, you know, reduced discount prices and, you know, these things just to try and keep making it work, you know, because I really cared about them, like getting to a place they wanted to go. Uh, so there, there was a part where I had to make a decision. Like, am I going to treat this like a business? Am I going to like, I actually have to make a living with this. I'm getting burned out because I'm just trying to cater to everybody else's demands. I need to start really focusing on what, you know, like fills me up. And then I can pour that into my clients more effectively. Once I started doing that, I actually got better clients as a result. And then also I was providing better service and I was getting paid more. So it was just like this, this like sort of a ha thing that I went through. That's the, the irony I was going to say, you just pointed out is with that is you end up getting the clients that you have that are less of a headache, right? It's mm -hmm. always the clients that Yeah, the client that buys the three for 99. Yeah, whatever. that wants a deal or is a friend of a friend and they're getting hooked up or some bullshit. Those are always the ones that are less likely just wears to on you. Yeah, follow what you're saying. And they're the ones that are the biggest headache. Shit, we see that even in this business. If we ever get a complaint or an email, it's always somebody who didn't buy anything. So <laughs> it's, it's like, I was working with Ann totally. the other day and she's like reading me this, like, she goes, she, if we ever get any complaints, I want to see all of them just so we can continue to improve the business. And, you know, she re reads me this person that's like complaining about something. And we obviously have access to be able to look at all, you know, what, what they've read, what blogs and this person has gone through like, you know, six blogs, three YouTube videos, downloaded two of our free guides, purchased nothing. We're complaining. <laughs> like, of course, it's that person. You know what I'm saying? The it's people true. that 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 get, that get things for free. It's funny yeah. how that that in the is. gym business is the people with the free passes. Like, right, they're going to complain the most mm -hmm. every single time. Right. The, the the last thing I'll add for from my end is uh, have fun. Have fun with your training <laughs> sessions. Have fun with your clients. It, not only is it good for you, but it's also good for them. You'll find that when your clients enjoy coming to see you because you guys have a good time, you laugh, you joke around, you have fun with your workouts. It also makes it enjoyable for you. Um, when you're always serious with your sessions, like this is fitness, mm -hmm. we're working out, we're doing our sets, that's all we're doing. Oh my God, you do that day in and day out. <laughs> Watch how, how, how tough it is to continue doing your job. Dude, that is such a good point. And you just reminded me of a tip that this person could use it. So, um, and I did it for this exact reason. Uh, it's totally selfish. Um, there wasn't a ton of value for them in their, in their training program for this, but it was for entertainment for myself and it doesn't hurt. Right. Uh, I would compete my clients. Like, so uh, I start, I, I'd go through like a phase where it's planks. <laughs> yeah. And so the end of every workout, we would do a plank hold for as long as they could. And I would time it. And then I would let them know where they ranked up against the rest of my clients. And so it made something fun that we could do. And it could be a, a squat hold. It could be, you know, vertical jump. It could be a sprint on the treadmill for a mile. You could do a lot of different things that are fitness related. That's challenging for them. And I used to end workouts that way, and they would love to see their improvement on that themselves, and then also compare themselves to other clients, and then they gave me something kind of to have fun with, and that was a, I totally forgot all about that until you mentioned that. I think Very that's a great cool. point. 